Why did Attack on Titan Season 4 change studios for the final Attack on Titan season? So what's up guys, Fox here. Hope you're doing well. I'm still on a very much wonderful high from the recent Attack on Titan Season 4 trailer, freaking finally. But I do want to address the Attack on Titan Studio change topic. Why is Wit Studio no longer making it? Will this not have a god tier soundtrack? What in the Titan world is pre-animated? I will give you my own thoughts about the situation, based on my own knowledge about anime production, on top of this being super familiar with what's been going on with Attack on Titan over at Wit Studio. This will hopefully answer a lot of the questions I've seen from you and clear up any confusion. So, colossal smash that thumbs up and subscribe. Post any questions you have below, but I do ask you to finish the whole video first. By the way, this video is sponsored by Bookwalker. Definitely check them out after your video for all your Attack on Titan and anime needs. Discount available for Fox and fans. First off, why the studio change? This will be my speculation on the series of events. Keep in mind the people at the Wit Studio actually gave their blessing for this final Attack on Titan season. That's over there on the official website. This, plus some of the stuff I'm about to get into, does suggest this was a mutual agreement between Wit Studio and the production committee. Let me explain what I mean. Some of you may have heard about this, that the Wit Studio has infamously been known to have so many problems with the production of every Attack on Titan season. There has been some speculation about whether Attack on Titan season 3 Three, it was split due to the network, or perhaps it was actually Wit Studio trying to do more than they could handle. Wit Studio itself is a small studio. From an article back in 2016 at Sakudakan, they mentioned they had 34 employees, which means they don't have a lot of staff. A good chunk of the Attack on Titan season episodes have been outsourced. I'm personally pretty familiar with DR Stagio. You definitely know their work from Attack on Titan season 3, the Marley stuff from the basement reveal. Taking a step back, a huge confusion about anime studios is that they get to decide that they have every say about the anime they make. Oh, this anime was only 13 episodes. The anime studio only wanted a short season. No season 2 or no sequel? The anime studio just didn't want to, they don't feel like it. Why does this anime have so many fillers? The studio must love fillers or stretching it out. Actually, in reality, it's pretty much the complete opposite situation. Studios rarely are the ones that get to decide. Just to give you a rough overview, how anime is produced starts with the production committee. The production committee is made of different players or companies. These are the guys that put money down for this new anime project. They're also the ones that get to benefit or potentially lose money. A good example would be a toy company putting down funds. They may be interested in a super long-running morning anime like Pokemon. Now, where does the anime studio come in? You should notice how the actual anime studio is rarely a part of the production committee. Wit Studio has actually never been part of their own production committee for Attack on Titan. In short, Wit Studio is best as seen as only a contractor. They're hired and get paid X amount to make this anime. It'd be similar like if you hired this contractor to fix up your kitchen, or hire someone to build your PC. And yes, I'm sure he could think of better examples. But at the end of the day, what you do with your kitchen or your computer is up to you, the owner, not this person you hired. What this boils down is that it doesn't matter how successful Attack on Titan has been globally, Wit Studio doesn't directly ever get to see any of those profits. Which brings the next thing I know you're wondering, why aren't they? Unfortunately, it boils down to money. Money makes the world go round. Anime studios really just don't have the funds to take a seat with the big boys. Which yes, it is a crappy situation. But unfortunately, that is the harsh reality for a majority of anime production. I will point out a handful of studios that actually are on the production committees. Anime studios like Ufotable, Kyoto Animation, and Trigger Studio. At the end of the day, Wit Studio wasn't on the production committee for their own anime series, which meant they made very little from Attack on Titan. I would even speculate, or wouldn't be surprised, that it potentially cost them more to make an Attack on Titan season than what they were making, partly due to production issues. There are in fact anime studios here in Japan that exist to handle sudden unexpected work. Of course, this rush delivery always comes at a premium. On the flip side, I will mention it's not all that horrible a situation for Wit Studio. After all, Attack on Titan Season 1 was really what put their studio on the map. You can be sure that at least partially helped them to get future projects like Villain Saga, and later to get outside funds for their own Attack on Titan clone, Kabaneri. Their original anime would allow them to keep a good chunk of the profits. I would almost bet that they've got more profit directly from the Kabaneri movie instead of Attack on Titan Season 3. Which, by the way, I'm not bashing Kabaneri. It actually is an anime I enjoy. Now, getting into MAPPA Studio. For anime studios, they actually have anime productions lined up two to three years down the line. You even have bigger studios like Bone Studios or Madhouse that could have projects lined up for four to five years. Either way, you have a work schedule down the line. Looking at MAPPA Studio, this was actually a studio made by a founder and former producer of Madhouse. How appropriate! 
This means the whole changeover to MAPPA was not something that suddenly came about. It was not something that was decided on when Attack on Titan Season 3 ended. Looking back at Attack on Titan Season 3, The Uprising Arc, that started airing summer 2018. If you recall, Funimation at the time had a previous wrong date, that Attack on Titan Season 3 was supposedly being released in spring season. I'm thinking, perhaps they aren't wrong, at least not wrong at the time, but it was instead info that the Wit Studio told them, or someone related. But then, due to issues over at Wit Studio, Attack on Titan Season 3 had to be quietly delayed or moved over to summer season instead. 2018 seems to be around the right length of time. The production committee should have been aware of all of the Wit Studio production issues throughout every Attack on Titan season. After trying to make Attack on Titan season 3, that should have been a very similar story. Hence forcing them to split season 3 into part 1 and part 2. Either during the Attack on Titan Uprising arc, or perhaps before, they should have been having the initial talks at least, to start getting this change of studio going. Attack on Titan Season 4 should be at least two cores, potentially 30-ish episodes depending on when Attack on Titan finally ends. The production committee and then Wit Studio probably saw that and decided mutually to bow out. This means Wit Studio back in 2018, or at the very least in early 2019, they already knew they were going to hand over this project. Because really, you don't want to hand over an anime project last minute. Otherwise, you get this horrible mess, similar to 7 Deadly Sense Season 3. Next up, let me actually get into something that's been circling about this trailer. The claim that this was pre-animated. Let me clear up the confusion about this. This pre-animation or advanced animation has been confirmed via Twitter. Funny how so much info comes from tweets. But what does this mean? So before an anime actually comes out, you want to hit this audience with something big in your initial trailer, hopefully the first one. The anime studio would naturally include some scenes from their early episodes. Episodes they got done or mostly done. But what if you wanted to include something huge, something that takes place in episode 10 or 11? In other words, episodes that have no animation or work done yet. This is where those very specific scenes would get higher priority for the trailer. This does not mean the whole episode got rushed, only those specific cuts. Keep in mind this pre-animated or advanced animation is not at all unusual. In fact, it's actually a pretty common practice. Attack on Titan is definitely no stranger to this. It wasn't for a trailer, but recall that weird ending for Attack on Titan Season 3. They later confirmed this specific scene was rushed or pre-animated, even with the Attack on Titan Season 3 trailer, there were further changes and improvements made for the final episodes. I actually had videos covering these changes. Which means you can expect some of these scenes to look better for the given episodes, or with more context. And to be fair, a good chunk of this actual initial trailer was pure stills. Once again, oversimplifying this whole process, but hopefully this should give you a good idea. Next up, the voice actors. Let me just reassure you, you don't need to worry. They actually already confirmed the original Attack on Titan cast coming back. Even with the change in studios, it is actually expected for voice actors to stay the same. The opposite situation with replacing voice actors is much, much rarer. I mean, you still have Goku being voiced by a Japanese grandma. Next up, the composer for Attack on Titan Season 4. Why is there no god-tier music? I can see the confusion about this. The new Attack on Titan Season 4 trailer has Kota Yamamoto listed twice. Naturally, people are worried that no Sawano Hiroyuki for the final season. And I'll be honest, I don't know why. Perhaps it's just a preference. But Kota Yamamoto's name is written in English. But don't worry, you could breathe easy like me. Sawano Hiroyuki is actually listed as a composer. It'll be both of them. Two guys working on the soundtrack. Thank the Titan Gods. So yes, the music you heard in the trailer wasn't by Sowano, but he is on board. On top of this, this does confirm potentially they could use some of the previous Attack on Titan soundtracks. Or more than likely, I could see Sowano making updated versions if needed. Going back to the change in studio, unfortunately one of the things that may be lost with Attack on Titan Season 4 won't be the God Tier soundtrack, but perhaps some God Tier animation. I'm referring to the work from Arafumi Imai. That name should sound familiar. Most recently, the Levi chase scene and Levi making some Beast Titan stakes. Those were done by him. Really, Arifumi has been such an essential part of the Attack on Titan anime, especially Levi. I do feel this final season would be lacking something without him, especially for any upcoming Levi scene. On the bright side, I will point out that Arifumi is a freelancer. So hopefully, hopefully MAPPA's already in talks with him. Then, for the Attack on Titan Season 4 opening, of course, everyone, including me, wants Linked Horizon to come back. And definitely let me know, do you want to see them back or do you want someone new? 
Keep in mind, season 3 has already set a precedent for a change. And don't get me wrong, I freaking love the Attack on Titan season 1 and season 2 openings, but the season 3 one by them? I hardly recall it. Either way, I do hope they return in some fashion. At the same time, I don't think it'll be the end of the world if they don't. Attack on Titan season 3 will have two openings, maybe three, so they got plenty of chances. Whatever the opening situation will be, expect that to be revealed with the second trailer. Next up, getting into some of the issues regarding how characters look or the change in design. I tweeted earlier about this, how anime fans had issues with the Attack on Titan season 2 major improvements, despite the Attack on Titan anime being at its peak there. People again complain about changes going into Attack on Titan Season 3, and even more complaints with Part 2. Keep in mind this was all within Wit Studio. Even if Wit Studio had remained on board, you sure as hell people would be bitching about the changes they made. In fact, I could even imagine more complaints than there are right now. That might have even included me. For MAPPA Studio, they really were in this tough situation, really due to the time skip. It just means every single one of your favorite Attack on Titan character will look different now. Somehow Levi was included in that. Again, I've seen some anime fans putting the blame on the anime studio, but this stuff is directly from the manga. If you have any issues with the new looks, completely fair. Just go scream over at Isayama. This does go back to that pre-animation or advanced animation for the trailer discussion. I do need to stress out how it's not completely fair to judge a single frame that looks weird when it appears for a split second or a few seconds at most. Cause if you really want to have that discussion, let's go back to Attack on Titan Season 3. You'll find a ton of funny looking stuff there. Funny stuff that did not get fixed in the Blu-ray. Which actually is a plus for MAPPA Studio here. MAPPA Studio does tend to fix or improve things on the Blu-ray release. A good example is their track record from past anime like Dororo. And don't get me wrong, you know me. When the season 4 anime comes out, and if something looks weird or off on a given episode, I'll be among the first ones to call it out on my episode reviews. I would also kindly ask you that if you're thinking about 7 Deadly Sins, Tokyo Ghoul, or One Punch Man Season 2, just throw that away. Cause really, those are among the top worst anime adapted examples in anime history. Even if somehow MAPPA Studio screws up the Titan pooch on this, I think it's safe to say it's not going to be anywhere near as bad. Really quickly, regarding the question about how Attack on Titan will be done while the manga is not yet finished, I don't know why some people think they're going to try to fit this into 13 episodes. Right now with the given manga stuff, they'll need more or less 20 episodes to catch up. Assuming no delays, that would put the Attack on Titan Season 3 anime almost into spring 2021. There's a good chance the Attack on Titan manga will be done or very close to conclusion by then. You could be sure that Isayama is working directly with the studio to give them info ahead of time. A manga and anime ending around the same time is pretty rare, but it has happened before. You have Full Metal Alchemist, and I do believe Erased was similar. Rezar is also not done, but I do believe they had a similar situation with Season 1. If you know any more anime, definitely share below. Anyway, should you be worried about MAPPA Studio? Sure, you could look at the track record for the studio, all the anime they have produced. On top of this, the actual people working behind the scenes, specifically their track record. But even if you forget all of that, what actually gave me the most confidence, the feeling that Attack on Titan is in great hands, was this first trailer. Sure, there's been some discussion about whether it spoiled too much, but honestly, I think this trailer was perfect. It really was what MAPPA Studio needed. This trailer needed to accomplish two major goals. The first, MAPPA putting their foot down. They had to come out of the gates running. A change of studio will give anyone reason to worry about. And two, really setting expectations, especially for anime-only people. This trailer did hint at a lot. On the other hand, it does tell you what's coming up. Pretty much a Cerecore counterattack for Season 4. It was better that they did this instead of the opposite. Otherwise, people would have been frustrated being in the dark. They wouldn't know where the story would be going until the major kickoff at the end. MAPPA Studio definitely succeeded with this perfect trailer with those goals. So hopefully this clears up a lot of the confusion. And definitely voice your own thoughts down below. Yes, I do try to read as much as possible that you guys post. Thankfully, I am sensing a mostly positive vibe from the Attack on Titan Season 4 trailer, especially from anime-only people. I mean, for me, I've been working overtime trying to get these videos out. I've gotten like 4 hours of sleep. But really, this trailer gave me like this super ultra high. Such a boost of energy. If that tells you anything of how positive it makes me feel. The trailer manga comparison video will be coming tomorrow. And really quickly, a special thanks to Bookwalker for sponsoring this video. Hey, anyone else here like Attack on Titan? Definitely check out Bookwalker for your Attack on Titan needs. They got all the Attack on Titan manga, that even includes the Attack on Titan Before the Fall prequel, along with some of the Attack on Titan guidebooks that have juicy information. 
head over to their site, pick whatever you want, and use coupon code FOXIN to get $5 off. You get an entire awesome buck, you're supporting the series, and you're also helping to support this channel in these tough times. If you do need any recommendation, definitely be sure to reach out and ask me. Anyway, bonus question of the day. Which Daka Titan character do you think looked the best in the trailer? Top 3 if you can't pick one. Or fun bonus if you can't pick. The worst or least favorite. Definitely subscribe for more anime and Attack on Titan videos. Check out my trailer breakdown and my Tower of God lore video if you haven't. And I'll see you guys later.